Hello and welcome everyone. Today our topic of discussion is HPLC interpretation for hemoglobin variants. In this video, we are going to focus mainly on interpretative aspect of HPLC. Now let's understand how the high performance liquid chromatography graph looks like. y-axis of the graph shows percentage of individual analyte measured and actual percentage of analyte is calculated by area covered under the spike. The x-axis shows the retention time. What is retention time? The retention time is a time between injection of analyte HB and detection of analyte HB. Now let's assume that this peak shows HBX. Then how to find the hemoglobin represented by this peak? It can be identified by the retention time. HBX has a retention time of 2.46 minute. Now let's see the list of reference of different retention time of different hemoglobins. These are the approximate retention time. The retention time of HBF is 1.12 minute, HBA 2.46 minute, HBA2 3.63 minutes, HBE 3.72 minutes, HBD 4.15 minutes, HBS is 4.42 minutes, HBC is 5.13 minute. So what is the identity of HBX. As we know the retention time is 2.46 minutes. So we can conclude that HBX is basically HBA which is adult hemoglobin. Now let's understand different reference values. In the normal HPLC, HBA is between 95 to 98 percentage, it is adult hemoglobin. HBA2 is 1.8 to 3.2 percentage, HBF is 0.8 to 2 percent and all other abnormal hemoglobins are absent. If HBA2 is elevated and the percentage lies between 3.3 to 4.0 then it is called borderline elevated HBA2 and it can be associated with hemoglobinopathies. In the thalassemias, the HBA2 is more than 4 to less than 10 percent and in hemoglobin E pattern presence the HBA2 usually more than 10 percentage. This is because in HPLC graph, HBA2 and HBE both are eluted at the same retention time. So we cannot differentiate between HBA2 and HBE just by looking at the graph. But we can differentiate it by knowing the percentage of hemoglobin. Now let's see the first graph. It is normal HPLC. Here you can see small table which shows peak name. First peak is F. It shows hemoglobin F. The percentage is 0.3 percentage of total hemoglobin. Next is P2. P2 shows glycated hemoglobin. Next is P3 window which shows degenerated hemoglobin due to the storage artifact and A0 is adult hemoglobin it shows 86 percentage and A2 is HbA2 it shows 3.1 percentage. So here for the calculative purposes we can add P2 and P3 into the total hemoglobin. So we receive here Adult hemoglobin A is 95.5 percentage and A2 is 3.1 and HBF is 0.3. So this is absolutely normal HPLC. 
Now let's see the HBS heterozygous or sickle cell trait. Here in the peak you can see F, P2, P3, A0, A2 and additional peak is observed which is S window. The retention time is 4.42. So here HbA is around 60%, HbA2 is 3%, HbS is 25.9% and HbF is 10.8%. In the sickle cell trait, the amount of the percentage of hemoglobin sickle is between 20 to 30%. Now let's see the HbD Punjab heterozygous or HbD trait. Here HbA is 53.1%, A2 is 2.3%, HbD which is additional peak observed at 4.15 retention time, the percentage is 40.5%. So in HbD heterozygous or trait, the concentration or percentage of hemoglobin is around 30, 35 to 45%. Age. And HBF is 0.1. So we can see that this is HBD Punjab heterozygous. Now let's see HBD Punjab homozygous. Here HBA is very less. It is 4.6. A2 is 2.4. And majority of the hemoglobin consisting of hemoglobin D Punjab which is 87.9%. So in the homozygous disease the hemoglobin D is major hemoglobin and consisting more than 80% of total hemoglobin. Next is HBE heterozygous. Here HBA is 68.2 and HBA2 shows 24.8%. As we have learned earlier that if HBA2 is more than 10% in HPLC graph, we should consider hemoglobin E presence in that particular sample. Because the percentage of hemoglobin is less than 50%, we can conclude that it is HBE heterozygous or trait. Now HBE homozygous. Here HBA percentage is 6.8 and HBA2 percentage is 77.5 which is more than 50% and approximately 80%. Majority of hemoglobin consisting of HBA2. So we can conclude that it is HBE homozygous. HBE beta thalassemia. Here HBA is 9.7, HBA2 is 51.4 and HBF is 30.1. Because of elevation of HBF along with elevation of HBA2, we can conclude that it is compound heterozygous HBE beta thalassemia. The next is HPFH which is hereditary persistence of fetal hemoglobin. Here HbA is 69.7%, HbA2 is 2.2 and HpF is 29.1%. In HPFH usually HpF is less than 50%. Beta thalassemia heterozygous. Beta thalassemia trait or minor. Here HbA is 91.6% and HbA2 is 5.6 which is more than 4 and HbF is 0.4. So we can say that it is beta thalassemia trait or minor. Beta thalassemia major. In this graph you can see the majority percentage consisting of fetal hemoglobin HBF is 93.8% HBA is 0% and HBA2 is 1.2. In the HBC homozygous the percentage of hemoglobin C is 81.6. HBA is 0, A2 is 5.8 and HBF is 10.1. We can say that it is HBC homozygous. In HBC plus HBD, we can find both types of hemoglobin approximately 50% of each. HBH plus HBS, alpha thalassemia plus sickle. It is again compound heterozygous. In this graph, we can see HBA is equal to 74.2%, HBA2 is 4, HBF is 2.3 and sickle cell 
hemoglobin is 20% and another peak identified which is called HBH. HBH a sharp peak before the start of integration in the first minute of illusion indicates hemoglobin H. This is the another example of HBH. These are the references for this video. Hope you like it. Thank you. Bye. See you in the next video.